hey mobile developers let's do login with google in the most simplest way possible so we'll be using expo and the react native so first of all we're going to create our project with typescript template so now we have our project opened and what we're going to do next is that we're going to run it now we have our project open and we have the default template of react native app so next we'll be installing three dependencies and we'll be we'll, we'll be running npx expo install and the first dependence will be expo, expo web browser second one is expo auth session and expo crypto now we'll, we'll be using expo web browser because we we'll need to use the browser to log in to access google to authenticate now i'll be installing my button component for my login with google button now the next thing we we'll have to do is to go to google cloud to set up our our login with google and once we're on google cloud websites as you can see here we can click on the console button at the top right and it will take us to our cloud console so we can create a new project if we don't have an existing project we want to use i can create a new project and i can set up our new project like this just give the name of the project let me say my code and i'll create the project next you have to make sure that the project you just created is what is selected up here as you can see i have my code project selected now we can go to api and services now in enable api and services we have to go to what we call oauth consent screen we have to create a consent screen for our project and this would be very quick i'll just run you through this now we need to be external so we can uh, allow any user with a google account to be able to log in with google on our app then we need to input our app name we just call it my code uh, uh, support email i'll use my email we can choose to include our app logo domain and the rest and we need this information here this uh developer content information that's very important i will just save and continue now we have our consent screen we can now go to credentials to create our credentials now we have to create credentials and the kind of credentials we have to create is oauth client id so first of all we'll create for the web we'll create for android and create for ios so let's start with the web now the one for the web we'll be adding the authorized javascript origin and that will be localhost 80 8081 how do i know that if i come to my project here i can see that my project is running on um localhost 8081 so that's why i'm using that and also we can add it the same as authorized redirect URIs and create so we've created our web client id and uh, even if you see mine now we're deleting it immediately so you don't need to use it it won't work for you next we're going to create for android and ios so let's create for ios first application type is ios we have to create for the three of them now we need our bundle id here and how do we get that now for us to get our bundle id we have to run npx expo prebuild and we'll have to select what we want to be our package name for both android and the same for ios and after selecting that it's going to create the pre-build folders it will create android and ios folders inside our project now once it's done if we go to our app.json file which will already be in our project folders we'll be able to see our package uh package which is for android and our bundle identifier which is for ios we can just copy that bundle identifier and go and paste it in google cloud console so we can just paste it here and we can skip the rest of this part for now and we can click on create and the next step we we'll have to take is to also you cannot use this i'll delete it as soon as i'm done the next step we we'll have to take is to create credentials for and note here that i'm always selecting the oauth client id now we're going to create credentials for android device so we'll select android and then we'll need our package name which is the same the same we got from our app.json file which is the same bundle identifier for ios and also now we need our sha1 certificate fingerprints now how do we get this fingerprints now we want to get our fingerprint certificate but the first thing we have to do let's clear our, term our terminal and let's run eas build configure we'll write yes by clicking y 
so now we'll have to select which platform we'd like to create for and we'll select i'll select all and then this is done and if we look at our project now we, have, we will see a file called es.json that has just been created but now for us to get our credentials our sha certificate key focus your focus your attention on the terminal here now i'll clear the terminal then what we'll run is eas credentials and cl on clicking enter it will provide us with some options and i'll select android because i want to create for android and also development i'll click enter and i'll wait for it to load and then it loads this up and i can use my arrow keys to go down or up depending on what i want to select but i'm going to select the first option which is key store manage everything needed to build your projects and i'll click enter on that one then i'll select set up a new key store and assign a name to my build credential i'll leave what is there like that then it will ask me if i want to generate a, a new android key store and i'll click y on my keyboard and it's going to generate it for me shortly and it has generated it and it said press any key to continue i'll click enter and there i can see my sha fingerprints i'll copy everything so that i can go and paste it in google cloud console i'll click copy and you cannot use mine also i'll be deleting this whole thing once i'm done with this video now i'm back here i'll paste my sha1 certificate fingerprint inside here and i'll click on create and it would create my keys for android my client id yeah next i'm going to copy my web client id ios client id and android client id from my google cloud console save them in my app here i'm supposed to use an env file but i'm not going to use that because of how fast i want this video to be and then i'll create uh, an object called config and add all three of them web client id ios client id and android client id because this is what we're going to use for to configure our google auth setup next i'm going to import expo web browser and also the expo auth session so that i can use google provider from it next what i'm going to do is that i'm going to use um put this web browser dot maybe complete auth session outside my component then i'm going to move this into my component the config into my components next now we'll be writing our function for prompt async i'll be adding my request response and prompt and i'm getting it from google provider using use auth request hook that is coming from the expo auth section now we have our prompt async which can trigger the login with google button but we also have to handle the token once we get a response from from google so to do this we'll just just follow me So having created the handle token function which handles the response and ret retrieves the token for us which we can use to send to our backend for proper authentication or to get our profile we can uh, what, what we'll do here with this use effect is that each time there's a new response we trigger the handle token function to get the new token that's been passed to it so that's why we have it in a use effect with the response as the dependency now if we save this and we click on login with google now we're seeing an a warning here this is not an error but a warning that says linking requires a build time setting scheme so to fix that we'll have to go to our 
app.json file and inside they will just add what they call a scheme and right now i'll just make it the name of our app which is my code i will save that and that should take away that error i guess i want to click login with google we won't find that error anymore and we'll continue now there's an issue here it's going to redirect us to google but we will not be able to log in because login with google does not work with expo go app and what we're using here to run our project is expo go app so login with google will not run with expo go app but there's something we can do and what we can do is that we'll have to run a development build of our project and then we can be able to use google with it so to run our development build what we'll have to do is that inside our build profile in our eas.json file we'll come and paste just paste this copy and paste this into its development simulator because we're going to be running a development build for our simulator which will install on our ios simulator here now we want to run our development build and we'll do that by running eas build profile development simulator which was the what we just configured in our es.json file uh, with the platform of ios and when we run that it will take a while let's say 30 minutes now do you want to proceed anyway to install expo dev client okay that's it okay i'll click yes i'll see y on my keyboard and it will install expo dev client and then expo dev client is installed and now our build is going on our build is queued now you might have to pay some money if you want your build to run immediately maybe if you run builds very different builds very often but you can also see okay our build is in progress now and you can also see the progress of the build here and the logs if you click on this link so as you can see now our build is in progress and it's running here's the logs we can see what's going on at each point and we just have to wait for it and it's important that we do not cancel this progress here so when the build is complete we will receive an option or a notification of how we should install the ios simulator build on our ios simulator here so while the build keep running we can monitor it and once it's done we'll be able to proceed with it so the process is done now and it's asking me if i want to install and run the ios build on a simulator so i'll select yes and it's going to do that for me shortly So it's going to open the simulator for me and it's bundling as you can see. So we'll be able to log in with Google now. If I select login with Google, continue. So as, as you can see, choose an account to continue to my code, which is the name of our project. So I will select the email I want and I will continue. and now it worked and i have received a token and now i can use this token to fetch the details of the user that just logged in using google so here's how we can do that Thank you very much for watching. Please, please feel free to subscribe and click the notification button. If, oh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, click the notification button.
so that when i drop a new content a new video you will be aware you'll be the first to be aware and also leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and it helped you in your project thank you stay blessed